Hi, my name is Jill. I was an ordinary girl until my family got rich. It's cool, but I wanted to stay the same, go to the same school, have fun with friends, but they started to get jealous of me. They thought I was a hypocrite. I couldn't prove to them my parents' money hadn't changed me at all. It hurt me a lot. One day, I went into the backyard of the school during lunch. I heard some commotion in the trash cans. I set my tray on a table and decided to see what was going on. It was terrible. A homeless man was having to rummage through garbage bins from hunger, and my classmates had surrounded him and were laughing. They started throwing food at him, and he fell to the ground, apparently quite weak, and he began picking up the scraps. I felt so sorry for him. I helped him up and wanted to give him some money so that he could eat some real food. But I had forgotten that my father had been in a hurry that day and had given me lunch money in large bills. So I handed the homeless man $100. I felt so awkward. I wondered what they would think about me now. The rich girl wanted to show off her money. But I was just trying to help. I saw that one of the students had called the security guard. The last thing this man needed was to go to jail. He had to get out of there. I remembered the hole in the fence that we would use when we skipped class. I helped the homeless man to get out through it and quickly went back to my things. I didn't expect to find them the way I did. It was so mean and disgusting. I almost burst into tears, but I was able to pull myself together. I knew that I had done the right thing, but I was hoping that everyone would quickly forget about what I had done. Alas, it did not happen. I became a school celebrity. They shouted insults at me and called me a bum's girlfriend. Trash was thrown at me. When I tried to eat my lunch, someone came up to me with a trash bag and emptied it out onto my tray. He told me that I didn't need to thank him. His family had enough to feed me and my friend. I sat in the bathroom the whole last class. I couldn't understand why I would deserve such bullying. I didn't know how much longer I could stand it. I waited for the bell to ring and went home, hoping that no one would follow me. I regretted not asking my dad to pick me up. Some kids from school started following and mocking me. I was trying to get away from them when suddenly someone jumped out from behind the trash cans and charged at them. The kids were terrified and ran away. This man came up to me and I froze in fear, but then I recognized him. It was that homeless man. He quietly said that he wanted to repay me for my kindness. I was so touched by this that I handed him another hundred dollars. He looked very embarrassed and told me that he didn't do it for money, but I insisted. I told him that my father had a lot of bills that large, so they should at least make someone happy. I didn't notice, at first, that he had followed me. I went into the yard and saw him outside the gate. At first, it alarmed me, because he must have been following me for a long time. But then I saw the look on his face. He was so sad. The homeless man was looking at me as if I were his last hope. I still can't believe I had the nerve to do what I did next. I let him into my house. While my father was at work, I could help him. No one would know. I showed the homeless man to the shower and brought him some of my father's old clothes. I saw tears in the man's eyes, but I pretended not to notice. I went to cook dinner for us. For the first time in many days, I felt good. My guest was very shy and quiet. I barely managed to find out his name. After dinner, Jack looked at me intently and thanked me. My heart ached. I decided to make him a bed in the basement. It was the only place my father wouldn't go. Besides, the door locked from the outside. Jack was still a stranger whom I had let into my house. Fortunately, he was understanding of this precaution, but I didn't know that the lock was broken. The next day, I overslept and was late for school. I jumped out of bed and rushed to pack my things, and then I remembered Jack. I stopped everything and ran to the basement. I was panicking. Where had he gone? Did he rob us? Father would kill me. I went into the basement and saw that everything was still on the shelves, but Jack wasn't there, so I ran out to look for him. When I found him, he was tidying up our garden. He just wanted to be useful. I felt so ashamed that I had thought poorly of him. I quickly took Jack back to the house. I couldn't let the neighbors see him. 
Jack asked me to cut his hair. I tried my best. And then he shaved, and I was amazed. I thought that he was a grown man, but he was a young guy and was stunningly handsome. Jack became emotional from his transformation and told me his story. He was 23. He had grown up in poverty, and his alcoholic father constantly mocked him. When Jack got tired of the beatings, he simply ran away. For a while, he assisted a janitor at his school and lived in a closet. But then, the principal found out, and Jack ended up on the street. He would eat the leftovers from the school cafeteria and get made fun of by his classmates. And then, everyone forgot about his existence, entirely. His story broke my heart. I told him that he could stay as long as he needed. I wasn't even thinking about how I would explain this to my father. That night, I couldn't sleep. As morning approached, I decided to do something crazy. I quietly crept down to the basement and invited Jack to my room. He agreed as if he, himself, had been wanting to. We made our way past my father's bedroom and closed the door. I really liked him and I wanted to get to know him better. I didn't even realize how close we had become. I hadn't felt so good with someone in a long time. Then I had an idea of how to keep Jack at my house. When Dad saw Jack, he got so angry, just as I had suspected. But I calmly reminded him that he had been wanting to hire a gardener. I told him that my friend Jack was just looking for work and I had asked him to trim our garden. He called Jack over. I was so worried about what he would say. Father carefully looked at the bushes and said that Jack had done great. The job was his, but he warned him that he would be keeping an eye on him. I knew what he was talking about, so I still tensed up because of the basement. Since then, Jack has been living in our basement, and I've been able to hide it from my father. But sooner or later, he will find out, and then Jack will be on the street again. Maybe I should tell him? And I'm not even sure about my relationship with Jack. I don't know if I'm really in love with him or really just want to help. I've made such a mess. I really need your advice on how to fix everything. Hello, I'm Michael. I'm 22 years old, and in any confusing situation, I laugh. Even when I'm sad, even when it's completely inappropriate, even when I don't feel like it at all. <laughs> I just can't control it. The fact is that I'm sick, and one of the symptoms of my illness is Pseudobulbar Syndrome. <laughs> Such a complicated name. <laughs> Simply put, it's Uncontrollable Laughter Syndrome. My first vivid memory of a laughing fit was when I was at my uncle's funeral. I was 13 years old at the time, and during the ceremony, when everyone was holding back tears, I could not hold back my laughter. <laughs> I laughed hysterically for almost three minutes, and everyone just stared at me with wide eyes. I was terribly embarrassed. I wanted to bury myself in the ground, but I could not do anything about it. I also had many embarrassing moments at school. Sometimes the elder kids even beat me up because they thought I was laughing at them. But <laughs> I really got into trouble when our plump, strict literature teacher, Mr. Mayweather, who loved spicy tacos, made a nasty sound right in the middle of class. <laughs> Everyone, of course, pretended not to notice anything, and I was about to do the same, but <laughs> instead I burst into raucous, uncontrollable laughter. To this day, I never know when it's going to happen. Without fail, it happens when I'm experiencing strong emotions. So, when I found out that my idol, Keith Flint, was gone, I laughed for about two minutes. Just like I did after watching the last episode of Game of Thrones. Despite all this, I'm lucky. First of all, my parents are very supportive of me. I know a lot of people whom I've met on the internet with the same problem and not everyone has been as fortunate as me. Many of them became outcasts not only in society, but also in their own families. I also have a girlfriend. I met Mona on the internet. Before her, <laughs> I had no luck with the opposite sex. My first date, when I was 18, lasted about two minutes. <laughs> the amount of time I spent laughing. We had just met when she ran her hand through her long, beautiful hair and it triggered my laugh attack. The second time with a different girl, we had managed to make it to a cafe and place an order when it happened again. 
She didn't run away, but quickly finished eating her pasta, skipped dessert, and left in a hurry regarding an emergency. <laughs> she didn't answer my calls after that. With Mona, everything is different. She, like me, has multiple sclerosis. She doesn't suffer from pathological laughter, but she gets me and doesn't run away when it happens. I understand that I'm not doing well and my prospects for the future are not encouraging. <laughs> but instead of crying, I laugh, albeit arbitrarily. Perhaps now, if you meet someone like me on the street, you won't judge him, call him names, or point a finger at him. Hopefully, you'll understand that he just has problems for which there is no medicine yet. <laughs> oh man. I wish you all a good laugh and thank you for listening to my story.